Hey everybody, welcome to Niagara Wine Videos. I'm Brad and I bring in the story behind Niagara's finest wines. And uh, today is November, Friday, November 16th, uh, and I'm taping outside again. Um, last time I taped outside was October 25th, uh, and it was beautiful outside. Um, and I promise I'm not only taping videos on nice days, it just kind of happened that way. Um, even though it's a little cool out, you know, um, it's still beautiful. Uh, the tree behind me, you can see the leaves have fallen off, so um, that's too bad. Uh, but uh, I promise I'm going to do a, for those watching the show, I'm going to try and do a weekly wine show. Um, so for those who want to come back every week and see a new wine review, uh, it'll be there for you. Uh, it'll be the weekly wine review. Um, I've been meaning to do this show uh, for a while uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, for one reason, uh, I like Chardonnay. It's probably my favorite white varietal um, out of you know white wine. Um, I find it's incredibly complex, and you can find all different versions of Chardonnay out there. So, been wanting to do a Chardonnay show for a long time. Uh, I've been thinking about it, and um, so today we're going to take a look at a 2010 Chardonnay from Malvoir. Um, I've already reviewed a wine from Malvoir. It was a rosé and it was incredible. Uh, so I thought, um, why don't I try a Chardonnay uh, and see how the uh, other Chardonnay is. Um, Chardonnay is really interesting uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, it's probably the most popular white wine uh, on the planet. Uh, if you check the data, uh, last I checked, um, you know, it's hard with all the new wineries popping up all over the world and all the new wine regions. But, uh, you know, the data reflects currently that Chardonnay is the most uh, widely planted and grown varietal, white varietal, uh, on the planet. So, and there's a couple reasons for that. Um, but the most important reason uh, is that Chardonnay can really grow in all kinds of climates. Um, it is incredibly adaptive. Um, it's a vigorous growing uh, wine varietal. It can grow in really cool conditions, in moderate conditions, in warm conditions, and in hot conditions. Uh, so it really doesn't have any preference. Um, it can grow all over the place, and it is growing all over the place, uh, from Chile, Argentina, uh, Australia, New Zealand, all over Europe, you know, France, Spain, Italy, Portugal. Um, it's also grown in England. Yeah, in Canada, in the United States, uh, all over the United States. You know, United States has a hot climate and a cool climate. Uh, Canada, mostly cool climate. So um, that leads us to the to the next discovery. Uh, Chardonnay, um, as a result of this being planted all over the planet, has really resulted in in two different uh, types of Chardonnay. You have your warm climate Chardonnay and your cool climate Chardonnay. Uh, the warm cl climate Chardonnay, uh, if you've had a California Chardonnay, you know that it's very fruity. Uh, they like to oak it, so you get a very um, fruity, oaky wine. Um, as a result of the warm climate, uh, it's usually lower in acidity, uh, which makes it a creamy feeling in your mouth uh, and a little more full body. Uh, the cool climate regions seem to bring um, higher acidity, um, you know, because the, the grape uh, doesn't get maybe f as fully as ripe, you know, uh, so it preserves more acidity, uh, and that lends itself to more uh, maybe cleaner and sharper uh, flavor characteristics, so you get more, preserves the minerality for one, um, but you also get uh, what's your orchard fruits, yeah, and um, uh, f maybe um, instead of tropical fruits, right? So you get, you know, apples, um, and you get pear flavors, um, and, but you still kind of get, uh, you know, the, um, I, I want to say anana, <laughs> a pineapple flavors, right? You, get, you always get pineapple in Chardonnay, but in the cool climate, I find you get more of the orchard fruits mixed in there with the uh, with the tropical fruits, where in the warm regions you really just get a big waff of the tropical fruit, you know, guava, uh, a pineapple, and uh, even mango. So, um, really neat Chardonnay. You know, what you should really do after you watch this show is go out and find yourself a cool climate Chardonnay and a warm climate Chardonnay. So maybe one from California, one from Canada. Um, 
and try them side by side and you'll really see the difference. Um, if you don't want to do that, uh, France, you know, the birthplace of Chardonnay, uh, is pretty unique because it has within its own country uh, cool climate and warm climate. So cool climate being um, Chablis, which is uh, about 100 miles away from its warm climate, which would be, you know, the Cote d'Or, um, in Burgundy, so and in the Cote d'Or, uh, you know the Golden Slope, uh, you have uh, Cote de Nuit and Cote de Bone, and uh, Cote de Bone is the more southern region, and that's kind of where um, their, you know, Holy Grail of Chardonnay comes from. So there you'd get more of the tropical fruits, but you know, being France, you always get the terroir driven uh, fruits. You still get minerality and lots of. Um, characteristics in the wine which makes it a very complete and sophisticated wine um, but they do use um, you know oak uh, the use of oak is always uh, integrated into the wines in Cote de Bone much like in California and then when you go up to uh, Chablis um, you get more of that cool climate so the higher acidity and more crisp flavors uh, Chablis is absolutely incredible because uh, and unique um, if you've ever had a Chablis it tastes totally different uh, than any other Chardonnay uh, really on the planet that you can find. Uh, Chablis, the soil, um, is limestone, chalk, uh, and fossilized uh, oyster shells, So, which gives it this really unique flavor. Almost you can taste like slate uh, and a flinty taste. Uh, you can really taste flint in the wine, which makes it completely different than any other Chardonnay. Um, so you have to try a Chablis if you haven't tried one. You definitely have to try one. You know, and it's, for those of you who, who didn't know uh, that in the soil there was, you know, oyster shells, uh, it, it's kind of ironic because how many times uh, have people said, oh, you know, what goes good with oysters? Uh, Chablis, you know, Chablis and oysters, always together, right? It's shellfish, food, seafood, Chablis, of course, right? So, you know, you don't have to look too far. It's right in the soil, which makes the, the wine, the grape. So, uh, France, you should definitely do that too. Get a Chablis and get uh, a coat to bone wine try them side by side um, and you'll really see the difference. Uh, so for today we're just going to take a look at a cool climate Chardonnay from Ontario. It comes from Malvar which is located uh, in Vineland area uh, right beneath the Niagara Escarpment so again remember it's blessed with limestone um, so the wine should have a nice uh, minerality to it um, com comprised with some orchard fruit and maybe some tropical uh, fruit in there. Um, this one here has got some really good reviews, 90 points across the board from the critics uh, and just wine connoisseurs. Um, so I'm really interested in trying it. Let's, uh, let's go down to the wine cellar and uh, give it a try. Okay, we're back. We're in my wine cellar, my favorite place in the whole world. Uh, again, and we're hanging out and we're tasting the Malavar 2010 Chardonnay uh, from the Niagara Peninsula. Uh, so again, the grapes can be sourced from all over the place, but knowing Malavar, it's probably from the Beamsville uh, Vineland uh, bench area below the escarpment. Um, so let's uh, let's give it a try here. I'm going to open it up with a screw cap and pop a drop stop into it, which will help me pour my wine much easier. Um, I might add that this wine is warm, um, not because I want it to be, uh, I prefer my Chardonnay's cooler, which I find preserves more of that crispness, um, it's also more enjoyable to drink when it's cool, uh, but there's some out there uh, that prefer to have it warm, um, to taste more the, um, the complexities in the wine, uh, so hopefully I can judge this fairly, uh, I like it cool, this is warm, uh, I should have had it in my fridge, but I like to store my whites um, on a shelf. So uh, I'm just going to pour it for you here. Maybe up close, you can see the color. So there we go. It's um, again, it's a pale, pale blonde color, really. Uh, if you can see that, just a light golden color. Um, and in the warm climates, usually you get a, a deeper uh, yellowy color with you know, tropical fruits, like I said, the, the guava, banana, pineapple, mango. Uh, and in the cooler climates, you usually get a, a paler yellow color, you know, a light blonde color like that. Um, you know, almost like uh, you get in a, um, you know, a champagne wine, because Chardonnay is a grape used in the production of champagne. 
Um, so that's almost what that looks like, you know, champagne color. So let's get that up close for you. And um, let's see what's going on in the nose. So yeah, you, right away you get that steely minerality. Um, get that actually first and foremost. But just like a hint of, um, you get like a, a hint of mustiness in there. And of course you gotta let it, you know, you gotta let it open up a little bit. I didn't decant the wine, I didn't put it through a venturi to aerate it, so you really gotta kinda just let it sit there. Um, it's a little bit unfair to judge a wine when you first pour it, so let's just, uh, you know, keep the clock rolling here, keep swirling to open it up. Now you're getting um, a little bit like apples and bananas blended together. Apples for sure. But maybe it's pineapple. Maybe just a little bit of pineapple. Maybe. So hints, hints of pineapple, banana apples. So there you have it, you know, mixing the the warm and cool climate together. And I'm honestly not just making this up. This, uh, if you try this, you'll, you'll smell apples and bananas, I think. Um, but definitely, to me, I get the, um, you get, you know, musty uh, minerality smell, most. Yeah, like you almost get like a, a wet rock smell in that. So nice minerality in there for sure. Um, so let's just give this a try. Wow, you definitely get a steely minerality on the finish. Light to medium body. The acidity actually is um, really crisp, but really well maintained because it's incredibly elegant. This wine, really, really smooth. Uh, incredible mouthfeel. And also just a little bit of caramel in there. So. A little bit of oaky caramel you get in there in the palate. Fruit wise though is pretty muted. Most drinks like like a sparkling uh, you know champagne without this, the bubbles. It's got a nice um, like a toasty baked uh, caramel taste to it but fruit wise uh, you know pretty minimal. Yeah, I guess maybe apple ba apple banana is you know same as the the nose, but really dominated by minerality. So it's very French in its attack. Um, it's almost uh, you know like a Chablis, but without like I was saying um, that specific flinty character. It's very elegant, very mineral driven. A uh, little bit of tropical fruit on, in there. Um, with apples, but mostly I, I would say this one is dominated by uh, it, uh, you know, its minerality, uh, its elegance. So, yeah, nicely done. So this would be a good wine to pair uh, next to a warm climate from California to really see the difference. You know, um, more mineral driven, uh, clean wine compared to uh, California being much richer. Um, caramelized, you know, tropical fruit wine it would be much thicker and uh, viscous in, in, in your mouth too. This is more elegant, you know, more refined. So, yeah, the fruit's starting to open up there. See, if you just give it a sec. So, more uh, banana flavors. Anyway, nice job. Nice wine.
Definitely got to try uh, the 2010 Malvar Chardonnay. At, I think it's only $20, so it's a screaming deal uh, for a wine like that. Um, there it is, guys. Cheers.